We set up in the lab a bowl full of glass beads, tiny glass beads that represent sand. Set up a, an apparatus that would hold a steel ball bearing at a height of a meter above the surface. You flicked a switch, the ball dropped down, went into the sand and made a crater. Well, the advantage of using glass is that it's more nearly spherical or round so it doesn't have any sharp jagged edges. We have two bags of these downstairs. Uh, one is uh, the, the diameter of a typical bead is about a tenth of a millimeter. The other one is 0.6 of a millimeter which you can imagine because you can see it on a ruler so that's actually quite a coarse grain. So there's a substantial difference between these two. This is the fine powder, the 0.1 millimeter beads you can see it falling down as if it were a waterfall into the tiny bowl and we do this slowly so that the bowl underneath gets a, um, a layer which is as gently created as possible. It turns out that air has a big effect and we want to trap the air as much as possible. If you don't do it this way, if you stamp it down the whole effect disappears. Right, this is the, the bed of the hut point one, and here comes the little ball bashing into it and you get a nice crown appearing, as you might expect. And then after this crown dies away, a plume appears in the centre of the screen, rising up higher and higher and higher. And then that plume seems to break into little bits and fall down. So you get a secondary effect of a jet, a plume, coming out of this cloud which appears as you look in sideways. Now we repeat the experiment using the bigger beads, 0.6 uh, millimetres, and the steel ball comes in, you get a corona coming out, but wait for it, there is no plume, nothing rises up from the centre. You just get a, a normal crater appearing in the glass beads. Now we're using the finer grain particles and the sphere comes down and bashes in and you can see it more or less from the top view and it digs a hole, blows out a, a ring shaped thing and the plume rises from the center, it goes up, goes up, goes up. So you've got a crater, a circular crater formed and now as the plume falls down you get a little dimple or pimple or whatever you would like to call it. Now we're looking at the same experiment for the larger glass spheres and down comes the sphere, creates a crater, a hole in the middle and now you can see that there is a slight dimple or pimple in the middle but nothing came up as a plume so it's almost the same creating a, a very nice crater but the plume has almost disappeared. The bed of sand is full of air. As the sphere comes down, it compresses the bed of sand when it hits, the, hits it, pushes down, creates a hole. And all the air in the region that it's just compressed wants to get out. So the further down this, this sphere goes, you've got a little tube coming up and the, the air trying to escape wants to go up that tube. So you get, after a little while, a blast of air coming up through this tube. Sand can fall into this tube from the sides and it gets carried away with the wind that's blowing upwards. So if these particles are tiny, they get swept up by this gust of wind. If the particles are heavy, they don't get swept along so easily. And that's the reason why they don't really blow up. You can see a little bit because they might have been blown up tiny amount but they don't go way up into the air so the finer the particles are the more they're going to get carried up by this blast of air. Where did that air come from? Was that the air that was between the part like under the bowl now? Yes directly under the ball because as it comes down it pushes and pushes these particles together and compresses them and that air wants to escape somehow and it, the only place it can go is up. It can go sideways but you do get this jet. What's causing this? is the air. And the proof of that is the experiment was set up by a group led by Jager in Chicago, a re re very respected group. And they decided to do it in a completely sealed container. So the bowl is in the container, the ball is in the container, and it's cut off from the rest of the world. And they could pump out the air. When the air is there, the effect is present. By reducing the pressure of the air sufficiently, they can make the effect go away. 
If you'd like to see more on this subject, including Worthington jets when objects hit a water surface, I'd really recommend Destin's video over at Smarter Every Day. Be warned, there's a little bit of toilet humour, but he's from Alabama. Also, I recently made a video about what I think when people write first in the comments section on YouTube. You can have a look at that if you like. And if you just want more slow motion, where well, we're doing a lot of it at periodic videos with chemistry videos at the moment, I'll also include a link to that on the screen. I imagine, I don't know yet, but I imagine it will be below me and to the side in a box down there. I don't know, I sort of do this afterwards, but you get the idea. And of course, all these links will also be in the description under the video.